So if we move the scale here so that the 20 is above the 10, we know that 20 divided by 10 equals 2. So if the two scales remain fixed in this position, the top number divided by the bottom number is going to be equal to 2 in any part of the scale. We can put a cursor on the scale to visualize the top number and the bottom number more easily. So here on the 30 and over the 15, we have 30 divided by 15 equals 2. We can move the cursor here. 60 divided by 30 equals 2. 48 divided by 24 equals 2. This means that if the scale A and B scale are at a fixed position, we have that in a certain location, the top number divided by the bottom number are going to be equal to the top number divided by the bottom number in another location, which is going to be the same throughout the scale. It's going to be equal to a certain number we'll call k. If we were to move the cursor over here in this area, we would be in a place where we have a top reading, but we don't have a bottom one. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend this B scale down here to the right like this. And we use the same calculations that I showed you before to calculate these new numbers. So now if I move the cursor here, where on top it's over the 16 and the bottom it's, oh, it's over the 8, we have that 16 divided by 8 equals 2, just like in the other places of the same scale. Now I'm going to go all the way here to the right, and we align the new scale that we created underneath scale A. And what's interesting here is that all the numbers seem to be aligned. The only difference is that the top number is 10 times greater than the bottom one. This property is going to be especially useful when we construct the circular slide rule like the one that we use in the E6B. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the ruler all the way to the left. And I'm going to align the 100 with the 10. I also continue the numbers here on the B scale so they go up all the way to 1000. Notice how everything is aligned except for the fact that the bottom numbers are 10 times greater than the top numbers. Now let's slide the B scale here a little bit to the right and see what happens. If I move the cursor here where 60 is over 200, the answer is 0 0.3. And let's see if that's consistent throughout the slide rule. I'm going to go here, 24 over 80. If I calculate that, that's going to be 0 0.3. Now, what would happen if we, instead of having here 100, 200, 300, etc., we just repeated the same scale here that we have on this side. We know that the numbers align except that if you continue the scale, the numbers are 10 times greater. So what I'm going to do here is just going to repeat this scale here. And we'll have something like this. So instead of 200, we have 20. And instead of 300, we have 30. So probably what will happen is the answers are going to differ by a decimal point. So let's take a look here. 90 over 30. That's 3. So the answer is correct except for the decimal point. Let's slide the cursor here. And we have 60 over 20. And that's 3. And we have the same issue where the answer differs by a decimal point. Now, what would happen if we made the A scale into a circle like this, where we have 
the 10 here corresponds to the same 10 here on the linear one. And then we go clockwise in this direction, and we have the 20, the 30, the 40, just like we have here on the linear ruler. Except for when we pass 90 and get to the 100 here, we don't put the 100. We're just going to start the scale all over again. So this is basically like having a scale of infinite length. And the numbers are going to differ by multiples of 10 because we're not putting the new number here, 100, 200, etc. They're just overlapping and they're going to be different by a factor of 10, 100, 1000, etc. We're going to take a look now at the B scale. And we can pretty much do the same thing. Take a section of it here and make a circular version of the B scale so that uh, aligns with the A scale. You can see that the same cursor position that we have here on this linear straight line scale here, there will be the same corresponding position on the circular scale. And I'm just going to move it around here for you to see how they work more or less the same. So you have 40 over 20 here, you have 40 over 20 here. Now let's look at a few examples. I'm going to slide the B scale here, and you can see the corresponding B scale here slide as well in the circular one. And I'm going to move cursor to this position right here, 40 over 20, 40 over 20. We know that's equal to 2. If I move the cursor to another position, here we have 32 over 16, that is equal to 2. However, if I move the cursor right here, I'm going to have 18 divided by 90. That's 0 0.2. So it's the same as the other ones except for the decimal point. So what we have is whenever the cursor is on this region here, after the 10, we have one decimal point. And here you can see the same region in the circular slide rule. After the 10, we have another region where it's going to have a different decimal point. In this case, it doesn't have any. So the 10s and the A scale and the B scale, they mark the regions where the decimal points are going to be different. So going back to this region here, 80 over 40, that's 2, which is the same as the ones that we did before that are in the same region. We'll quickly take a look at another similar example. So I move the slide rule in this position here. I'm going to move the cursor here, 40 divided by 80, 0 0.5 is the answer, 32 divided by 64, 0 0.5, 18 divided by 36 is 0 0.5, and here 80 divided by 16 is 5. So again, right here in the region where this 10 is and this other 10 is in the B scale, we have a different decimal point, as you can see here. And this other region here, our answers were all 0 0.5. And here they are, the 10 here and the 10 here mark the different regions. 
if the A scale and B scales are at a fixed position in relation to each other, a number on the A scale divided by a number underneath that number in the B scale will equal to a number on the A scale in another position divided by the number right below it in the B scale. And that will be consistent throughout the scales. Except for the decimal point may vary as we just saw.